vulva into the vagina. And remember that vagina houses the vestibule, which is the shared space between the renal and reproductive systems in the female. And then it goes into the cervix. The cervix lies immediately behind the bladder. So if this is the bladder, right behind the bladder is the cervix. The cervix, if you feel here, it's a hard cylinder and it serves to protect or offers a form of protection from the uterine body where the fetus will be housed from the external environment. So that cervix is sealed. It protects from bacteria, dirt, anything else from getting into the uterine body. And it lies immediately behind the bladder. So you can feel it with your fingers. This is the body of the uterus right here. Uh, so if you remember, the uterus has a cervix, a body, and the uterine horns. So this animal has two uterine horns and a well-pronounced body. It's a bipartite uterus. So it's going to transition into the uterine horns, and there are two. This is all supported by the broad ligament. So if the broad ligament wasn't attaching this to the abdominal wall, the uterine body and the uterine horns would just kind of be free hanging out here. That obviously wouldn't be good. So the broad ligament serves to attach them or provide some form of structure. This is the uterine horn, and it transitions into the oviduct or the fallopian tube. This long, thin tube right here is the fallopian tube. Usually they're, they're curled up like this right here. So oviduct or fallopian tube, either name is fine, and they go to the ovary right there. So the ovary will release an egg or an oocyte into the infundibulum. The infundibulum is right here. It acts to catch the, the egg that's released from the ovary and direct it into the fallopian tube or the oviduct. So over, if we're, if we're an egg and we're tracing our way back into the uterus, an egg is released from the ovary. And if you look in here, you can see the development of follicles inside of that ovary. The egg is released and goes into the infundibulum where it's funneled into the oviduct there. And then this, the oviduct is primarily the site of transportation of the egg, but it can also serve as a site of transportation for sperm. So fertilization can occur in the fallopian tube but we don't want implantation to occur here. What would happen if an embryo implanted into the fallopian tube? An ectopic then, pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy, it would burst. It's not strong enough to support a fetus, so it would actually swell up and burst. So it will travel into the uterine tube, and then ideally, if it implants in the uterine tube, it's fine. And we do see implantation in the uterine tubes in sows, where they have well-pronounced uterine tubes of those litter bears. But in a single uh, a single parity or a single animal bearing animal, a single fetus bearing animal, it's going to implant into the uterine body, which is right here. So from the uterine horn into the uterine body, and then the cervix, and if we go backwards, the vagina, and then the vulva. So make sure that you can identify the ovary, that you can identify the fallopian tube or the oviduct, a uterine horn, the uterine body here, the cervix lies behind the bladder. So if you've been around a pregnant woman and they have to go to the bathroom all the time, they have a justified reason because that uterine body and the cervix literally are sitting right on top of the bladder. And the outside is the vagina and the vulva. And that's it for the female.